Hey guys, so if you're new here, let me tell you <laughs> the song of my people, okay? Everything I know and love gets discontinued. It's a travesty at best. I, <laughs> every now and again, will go looking for trouble um, in that I will read Sephora reviews about my favorite products and I just can't help but to feel like the Sephora reviewers are saboteurs against me and my favorite products because when they're reviewing my shit, it's like these products are so misunderstood and they're saying these things and the brands are reading them and they're like, maybe we should just fucking get rid of it. And then they're like, do that. That's what the Sephora reviewers say. They're like, do that. Get rid of it. And then they're like, fine, we fucking will. And they're like, we'd be happy about that. And I'm like, stop <laughs> the madness. What I'm getting at is I'm gonna sit here and do I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my makeup with some of my favorite products and then I'm going to read Sephora reviews to get angry <laughs> while I do it. Okay, let's, let's do this. The first thing that I, well, actually, I guess I could start with my eyes. Ooh, I actually do wonder if people love this product. One of my favorite products, like across the board, and I've ended up like going back and buying almost every single shade, um, is the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. Um, cream shadows so they come in these little pots they're just beautiful they blend out really really beautifully they work as like a nice like base for um, other shadows and stuff like that like I just I love them I feel like it's really like quick and easy to do with your makeup with them so that's what I'm gonna start with on my, my my eyeballs and I'm gonna pull up the Sephora reviews I feel like how could you not like that product though because it's perfect okay okay 4.3 out of 5 stars let's sort by the people who hate it. The first shite review, <gasps> they're from Vancouver. I'm pretty sure based on their username. They said this creased like crazy even with a primer. I don't often return products even if I don't like them because of the hassle and who knows if you might end up wanting to give them another shot but this one went back to the store in a heartbeat. Two people said that was helpful. Two people along with this commenter, three people total, about to convince Charlotte, Ms. Tilbury to Take this product off the market. I don't know that I agree with the creasing thing, man. Oh God, sorry. I'm just like reading through the, okay. I don't know if I, I personally haven't had problems with the creasing. I've tried them with primers and without primers, but I do feel like uh, if you put a powder shadow over top, then like it wears much longer on people that have like oilier lids. I don't have problems with it in general. Cause like I just, I, I do have dry skin, so. It just is what it is, but interesting. Okay, someone said no pigment. Had to apply several layers to show color and I'm very pale so it should have showed up easily. It creases as well. I cannot believe this. Someone else said too sparkly. <laughs> I thought it looked more shimmery in the picture, but it left sparkles all over. Also didn't last long. Patchy and uneven. Is there any on the color that I'm using specifically today? Oh yeah, I'm using Marie Antoinette and this is on that color. Patchy, uneven, and patchy and uneven, they said. This just wasn't pretty, <laughs> simply put. I tried with and without an eye primer. Using this as an eyeshadow, I just didn't look put together. Groundwork is such a better option. It's from MAC, it's an old, old school thing. Oh my God, so many people saying creasing. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And some people saying that they put it on and there's like no product left, like when they come back like 30 minutes later or whatever, like it kind of like, is all over the place. Interesting. A lot of people saying sheer. Something that I've noticed like over the kind of like explosion of like the makeup industry. I'm going to start applying this. I'm using the color Marie Antoinette. It's kind of like a taupey situation. Something that I've noticed over the kind of like explosion of the popularity of like makeup products and more and more people getting into it and stuff like that is that something that became like a massive trend is just like if it's not pigmented then therefore it's not good that's what i've noticed um and that seems to be like what most people kind of like focus on like when i'm watching uh reviews and stuff like that that's sort of like the main thing that people seem to talk about is like is it pigmented or is it not pigmented and it's just funny because i feel like unless something was like so horrifically unpigmented i don't know that i would like think to ever even bring up the, the color payoff, you know, because I just feel like there's some products that they're, they're meant to be sheer. And to me, these are, these are that. I think that 
with a product like this, <laughs> this is me defending my favorite products for 45 minutes. I think with a product like this, if it wasn't a sheer application, I think it would actually make it really, really hard to work with because it is a cream. So it's, it's not the same as like a powder where even when you're working with a pigmented powder, it's a lot easier to blend out and stuff like that. This is a cream that you're working with on such a small area. I just think that people would have a harder time with it if it was like super, super like intensely pigmented. Sometimes the color ends up not being what we want it to be because there's so much color payoff. So it's sort of like if, if you look at like a shadow in a pan, and you picture what that color is going to look like and then you put it on and it's like way darker than you were imagining or like it's just a really different tone or whatever that's kind of like the same thing to me with like if a cream is like really 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 like incredibly pigmented in some scenarios it's like this is like what i see in the pan and i want it to look like on my eye but if it was like so pigmented and so opaque it would be harder to blend out it would look patchier because like it is just a cream it's going to be like harder to work with in general and the, the color i feel like might end up not looking like what you're going for anyways and those are my rebuttals but i'll tell you what i love about this product i haven't had issues with this creasing personally i i do wear it without uh it's kind of like setting it with another eyeshadow over top, but I more often wear it with setting it So I'll usually kind of like put this all over and then put like kind of a shimmery shadow down the center of my lid Just as like a super quick kind of like eye look the thing that I like about it is it's just like super easy and simple and I like that um it has like a sheen to it so it gives like your you know lids like some kind of like texture and dimension and stuff like that but when you go to blend it out it doesn't look super like glittery and intense and shimmery like it kind of you know blends out to a nice just sort of like moderately matte-ish texture like it's not like if you were to take a glitter eyeshadow and blend it out into your crease it would still look like pretty glittery in saying that i feel like it's really easy to get like a nice diffused look while just using that product like i haven't applied any other powder or anything like that into my crease but it's like we have this nice kind of you know like dimension and shine on the lid and then blend it out into the crease like it just blends out really nicely and it doesn't look like i'm wearing like a glitter eyeshadow up to my brow or anything like that so that's what i love about them and i also I do really like a lot of the colors that they come out with because they're neutral. But I feel like a lot of the colors are really pretty as like a base for other shadows. And they have shades that are like deeper where you can do kind of more of like a smoky eye situation. And then shades that are like a little bit lighter if you are like a day makeup wearer. <laughs> and I feel like these also layer well. So there's some creams that I've tried that when you try to layer them up, they just they just don't like they kind of either like keep moving around or whatever and i feel like these layer really well so if i do want like a little bit more pigmentation if i do want like a little bit more texture and stuff like that i just kind of like layer them up over top of it itself i usually apply this the same way that i apply anything so like i will put down like a concealer or an eye primer and then i set that with a powder and then i go on with my my cream shadow i've used it without anything underneath and it's worked fine for me but um i think that if you didn't have skin like as incredibly dry as me then that might not be the best for you the next thing this is like a holy grail product for me okay and i'm gonna be very offended if people feel differently this is the hourglass scattered light glitter eyeshadow um this is in the color smoke which is one of my fave shades Ooh, this looks like this could be getting dry though i well, I'll just get into these shadows in a second, but let me read what people said about them. I feel like I'm running a gossip channel. But damn, they have a lot of colors now. I kind of forgot. Oh yeah, Ray is so, so dope. Oh yeah, hey oh yeah. Things are really coming around in my favor right now, guys. This has 4.6 out of 5 stars. 90% would recommend. Like me. And there's only 7 one-star reviews. Whoa, what a mess is the tagline. What a mess. I had glitter everywhere on my face as soon as the brush touched my eyelid. I wanted a medium pink shadow with a tiny pop and that's not what I got at all. This would work great as a highlighter. The spark, what? Huh? This would work great as a highlighter. The sparkle is intense or for stage makeup, the sparkle is intense. <laughs> I tossed it in a drawer after the first use and, use and totally forgot about it. Now it's too late to return it. Wait, what? Did Sephora change their return policy? Because they used to like just be like, Oh, you bought that 12 years ago? 
Sure. <laughs> we'll take it. It's, it's interesting that they said that it got glitter all over their face, which they didn't enjoy, but then went on to recommend it as a highlight. This is my hell. I, I, I can't even describe to you working in retail makeup and someone will buy like a foundation that's called like ultra max coverage, full coverage, never see through tattoo foundation. And then they take it, buy it, bring it home, try it, bring it back and say, this is too full coverage. <laughs> the name of this shadow, Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadow. This review says too much glitter. <laughs> Perfect. This person said that it irritated their sensitive eyes. Fair. That's, that's fair and justified. This person said, not for me. Gross. I couldn't wait to try this. I waited for months and bought it and did not like it at all. Glitter everywhere. <laughs> Tan everywhere, Jan everywhere. I bought foil and took it back the next day. This person said I wouldn't recommend, especially faux, but then it doesn't, I don't get to see the rest of their thing. I don't know why Sephora lets you put in that long of a title if they're not gonna like show you the title. I wanna know what they meant. I don't get the hype. This didn't spread on my lid with finger or brush. It crumbled. Like all others, swatch is completely deceiving. Also, I do have saggy eyelids. Maybe this applies better on tight. <laughs> firm eyelids doesn't work for me extremely disappointed oh. someone said def not worth a 30 price 30 dollar price tag since you can buy an entire palette from that i returned mine yeah that's fair it's 38 dollars in canadian let's put this on my eyelids i'm using the color smoke i just fucking dude i just love this color it's like this really pretty taupey shade i'm gonna be using my uh, smith 253 brush and i'm just going to get my little brush in there and then i'm going to bring that down the center of my lid and kind of like a little bit in towards the inner and outer corners and then after i'm done with this like preliminary layer I usually like to go in with my finger. The thing I love about these is that they're so good. <laughs> TM. They are just like so stunning. Like I honestly, this is one of those products where it stands out in my mind because every single time I take a photo with it or I'm wearing it in a video and like haven't talked about it, like I didn't apply it on camera, everybody asks me what I'm wearing because it just it gives you like the most like beautiful texture. Like it's not super chunky and gross or anything like that, but it just, there's just something about it. Like it's just such a like unique texture and it really gives off like a finish that just looks super different for me. I don't know. Cause like a glitter, like a pressed glitter shadow sometimes for me just kind of falls short because it's almost like those glitter particles get so compacted that like, it doesn't really give a lot of texture. Like it gives you shine, but like not this like really pretty texture. Whereas like with this one, like I feel like it almost stays like these like really pretty kind of like separate like glitter particles. And I just love it so much. So anyways, I'm going to take a little bit on my thingy and I'm going to bring that right down the center of my lid just to apply more just to add a little bit more on and give it a little bit more texture because the other thing that i love about this is it just layers really really well over itself without kind of like getting flaky and like coming off i feel like a lot of shadows you can kind of get them to a certain point and that's about it whereas with this one like i do feel like even with that price point i mean i, I'm, I always love like luxury products obviously we've all like just become accustomed to that coming from me. I feel like that product has some variety to it in that like you can apply like a really nice light kind of like wash of that color, but then you can also like build it up and make it like a really a kind of like more intense, like textured glittery kind of look. But I just, just something about that. It is like the most like stunning shadow ever to me and I will never get over it. One thing I was gonna say is that I know a lot of people have had kind of issues with it like drying over time. This one I've had for like, gosh, I would almost go as far as to say two years and it still is fine. Like I haven't had any issues with it and it doesn't look like it's like super dried. So I, 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 don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if it's just cause it's like so cold here in Canada that things just like, it's almost like a, what is it called, cryogenic when you're like frozen like Walt Disney, allegedly. 
is frozen. That's almost what I feel like is taking place in Canada as like a nation. <laughs> Things are just immortalized forever as soon as they cross that border because it's so cold that nothing can go bad. That's my theory. Uh, let's move along. I feel like this product has like become more loved in recent times. The one product I feel like I can like guarantee people are gonna hate so much, but okay. Anyways, my Becca under eye corrector. What am, wait, what? <laughs> what am I doing with these eyes? Is that just it? Is that just where I'm leaving that? I guess I'll just put on lashes later. Okay, I'm gonna do my Becca under eye brightening corrector. 4.1 out of five stars. Game changer. Hell yeah, I fucking completely agree. This is simply the best under eye corrector or concealer. A tiny bit corrects dark circles and conceals real well. It never creases and lasts all day. In fact, it looks better as the day goes on. I often just use it before foundation and don't even bother putting another concealer over top. It's a great product written by Samantha Ravendal. <laughs> just kidding. That wasn't written by me, but I completely fucking agree. Okay, let me go to my one star ratings. 131 people. Useless. How dare you? I was excited about purchasing this product because of my reddish under eyes that were extremely reddish under eyes. Well, then this doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Okay. My reddish under eyes that were extremely hard to cover up. I used the Too Faced Sculpting Concealer, which is my holy grail concealer, but you can still see a little bit of redness peeking through, so I tried this. It literally did nothing. I think that the color wasn't right for my redness. I agree. I think that the color wasn't right for my redness and it's more suitable for someone with bluish or maybe brownish under circles under their eyes. Also, it looked a bit oily. I think Becca should consider adding a green, co adding a green color corrector to their collection and then I would consider trying it again. I exchanged it for the Urban Decay Color Correcting Concealer in Green. Definitely brightens up my under eyes a lot better. Six people said that wasn't helpful. I don't know. That is uh, interesting. Yeah, so basically like the whole kind of like point of this product is that it's a little bit more kind of like of a salmon tone. It looks like my exact skin tone. It's a little bit more of like a salmon tone. So the thing that I really like about this is that it's, it's a more like muted version of <laughs> a color corrector because so many of the color correctors that are on the market are like these really intense like oranges and reds and stuff like that. And to me, I feel like it's it's a little bit counterproductive in that now you're having to conceal that like incredibly intense color, whereas like this to me is still correcting, but it's a little bit more neutralized. It's kind of like pulled back from being like full on orange. So it's still gonna help correct, but like when you're thinking about color correction, so like my under eyes have like a blue kind of like purple tone to them, but I still have like my skin tone that's mixed with that. So it's not like this is like, full on like royal blue, like perfectly blue, where I'm gonna need a exactly orange to color correct if we're going on our color theory wheel. It's like blue, but like a little Caucasian, <laughs> you know? In saying that, this is like a more neutral version because like my color correct, like what needs to be color corrected is more neutral as well. So in, in the event of having redness, yeah, green is the color to use. So I can see how this would have done nothing because it's like basically applying, you know, like a pinky tone over top of red, which isn't, if anything, that's going to like kind of highlight it a little bit. Someone said super sticky. Am I the only one confused by this product? This stuff is super sticky under the eyes. Almost feels like I'm applying lip gloss under my eyes. I don't find that it's brightening, but I do find that it leaves a lot of creasing and makes it hard for me to blend my concealer. It could be that I don't know how to use it properly, but the texture of this product just turned me off from the I love this so much. I love this so much. It could be that I don't know how to use it properly, but the texture of this product just turned me off from the gecko. From the gecko. I love it. It's such a shame because I love Becca products and have a lot of their products, which I love, but this just doesn't work for me. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I agree. It actually is quite a sticky product. So let me uh, let me show you how I apply this because I've showed you in every single video for the last, like, <laughs> I don't know how long, not many months, but I'm going to do it again. So I usually take this on like a dense kind of like buffing brush and I take a pretty small amount of product and I start where my, sorry, discoloration is the, worst. So for me, that's like right in that little area there. My under eyes actually don't look as bad on camera as they do 
in real life. For me, I apply like such a small amount of that product. If I'm applying more, like almost like a, a, as much as I would apply my concealer, if I do that with this, I agree, it is actually like quite a sticky product. What I like about that is when you're using a smaller amount of product, kind of like just enough to sort of like almost like prime your eyes for concealer. When you apply that, it's a small amount and it's blended out kind of thing. I feel like that tackiness almost helps my concealer last longer, which I really, really like. So I usually just apply a tiny little bit with my like dense brush like that. So I'm getting that kind of intensity of color where I need it, but I'm not, Ap over applying and that's what kind of like denser brushes are really helpful for because because the product is so dense and when i say dense i just mean like there's like a lot of bristles packed in packed in there when a brush is so dense it's not going to be able to pick up that much product because like there's nowhere for the product to really go so it kind of just sits right on that surface and it it helps with like keeping that hmm how can i explain this a brush like this okay it's like a little bit fluffier and a lot less dense so you can see it's kind of like floppy whereas like with this like it's not as floppy because it's so packed with bristles so this brush is actually going to like pick up a little bit more product but it's not going to apply it as thickly as this would this will pick up less product overall but it will apply it more densely because the brush is so much more dense if that makes sense so that's why I like a really dense brush for that because it just uses the tiniest little bit of product. I'm not going to be over applying where I'm then working against myself, trying to blend it out and deal with like the sticky texture and all that kind of stuff. But I'm getting that uh, saturation of color exactly where I want it so that I'm getting that kind of like correcting feel. So that's what I do for that product. The next product that I'm going to be using is a newer fave. This is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. Let me look at my things. I'm actually curious how people are liking that okay 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 most people like this as well i'm really like pleased 4.4 4 out of 5 stars 87 percent would recommend Ooh, the first one says this kills me to give this three stars first off the color match is spot on but there's just something with this formula i don't love my favorite concealer is the nars radiant creamy but i love hourglass so much i thought i'd try this out it's almost gel like hmm. and has a strange dry down where it blends out creamy but sometimes dries patchy i don't under under eye conceal often but i do like it for this purpose, if you're using a very sheer amount, it didn't accentuate my fine lines. However, it's no good for spot concealing. <laughs> Ooh, someone said better than shape tape. Ooh. Someone said too hyped, it sucks. Uh, I really wanted to like this, but unfortunately it was the opposite of liking it. The coverage is not there, it's too greasy, and the th the worst thing is that it gave an allergic reaction. My lower eye was on fire the whole time I was wearing it, 20 min. Uh, I took it off and my skin was red blotched. Horrible experience. Keep y'all money. It sucks. I'm waiting for my local Sephora to open up to return it. All right. I usually love Hourglass products. They didn't have a tagline. I usually love Hourglass products. I purchased this without hesitation because normally the brand is excellent. The consistency of this product is poor. It doesn't provide proper coverage and becomes cakey. So disappointing. Product was returned. Swollen eyelids. Left me with an almost swollen shut eyelid. Never had this happen with another concealer. Interesting. I wonder um, if there's like some type of ingredient that is in there that's like unusual that people are having a reaction to. That's interesting. I don't know how this can be advertised as a full coverage concealer. I would say, what? <laughs> I would say it's light to medium coverage. Shade range is decent, de decent, decent, but I expected this product to live up to the claims considering the dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign price tag. Not too drying under the eye if applied to a hydrating base. I have very dry skin for reference. Overall, not wowed by this at all. Wow. This is why this person, <laughs> this singular person is what shaped the makeup industry as a whole. It's interesting because like there's so many products that come out that say, I've bitched about this so many times. Everyone's like, we get it, Sam. There's so many products that come out that say they're like sheer or light coverage and they're like not even fucking maybe sheer or light coverage, like at best medium buildable. And a lot of them are actually in like my opinion, fuller coverage. And so I feel like what this has resulted in is like, there's just so many full coverage products in the market because it seems like that's what everyone's really into, which like a fine, but it's interesting. This is like, I would in, in no way would I ever describe this as light coverage. <laughs> I feel like you need such a small amount of this to get really, really good coverage. And I will kind of preface that with saying like, I don't have really intense discoloration and I usually do layer this with my Becca under eye corrector. Someone said, uh, shocked someone even approved this. This is the worst concealer I've ever used. I don't know if I got a bad batch or what. It is so dry. It reminds me of 
wet sand. It is hard to even blend and I swear I felt my eyes <laughs> shrivel as it dried up. I took it off right away and they still feel dry. I love the bottle and applicator, but I just can't believe people like this formula. Oh, there's a little squirrel on my... If I were cute, sorry. But I can't believe people like this formula. I feel like your under eyes would have to be oily to even be able to make this work. Other than that, I got sepia and it's super yellow and strange looking. Dying and strange, drying and strange smell. Smells fishy. Oh, I really like the smell, actually. <sighs> Interesting like how many people are kind of like speaking on the texture. I feel like the texture is quite similar to um, a lot of concealers. Like I, I don't know that I, I tried it at any point and was like, oh wow, that's like a really unique texture. I feel like it's quite similar to, to everything else that I use. I'm gonna be using the shades Silk and Cotton. So I'm gonna use a little dot. This is uh, Silk and then I'm gonna take Cotton apply that there and then I'm gonna go with my beauty blender and blend out so I what I like about this product I featured it in quite a few videos already but this product to me is really really good coverage while not getting cakey I feel like you can build it up and it kind of like you can continually build that coverage if you want to, but it doesn't end up looking like so thick on the skin. It's interesting, like a couple of the reviews said that they felt like it accentuated their fine lines, but I feel the exact opposite. Like I feel like this helps to make my skin look, it, it's almost more like a satin finish. Like it's not like dewy or like glossy for me. It's more of like a satin finish where it's not so matte that it looks really, really dry. It's, it's like a like skin finish. So I feel like it shears out really beautifully where you don't get this like thickness of the product even when you're like building and layering it up and it just stays like this really nice texture of like not looking too dry and not looking too like whatever it's interesting that that one person said it was flaky again for reference i have like pretty dry skin i do like the combo of of the uh becca under eye corrector and any concealer really but because like i like my skin to look a little bit glowier i think that it's kind of nice to have that like glowy kind of like now I'm never gonna stop calling it sticky because like it is kind of sticky that having that kind of glowy like sticky base with like a more like skin finish concealer for me is like just a perfect combo but I love that concealer I really just feel like it it does what I need it to do with not very much product it's like the time of my life and that said like I don't really spot conceal that much because I just don't fucking care anymore <laughs> to be honest if anything what I sometimes will do is like with the product that's left over from blending out my under eyes i'll just take that and go over top of the areas that i feel like need a little bit more coverage so like if that's my spots or damn my, my skin's been so brutal dude if that's my little nose or around my forehead area or my spots or whatever then sometimes i'll take that um sponge with a leftover product so that i'm not having to apply more product i'm just kind of using what's left over to create a nice little thin layer to spot conceal and that's it there you go. Boop. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I had a, oh God, I had like this like pan eyeshadow just sitting loosely on my desk for what reason, I don't know. And I just rolled my beauty blender through it and I'm very upset about it. Okay, I'm gonna do my foundation. This is a new fave. This is the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. I must say, shape tape aside, I don't, like much of Tarte's like skin range. Like I really have, I've tried so many of their foundations and all of them I felt like were so bad. <laughs> like I felt like they were all really thick and cakey and dry. And like, I just, I've really like strongly disliked basically all of the like kind of foundations and all that kind of shit that they've come out with. And so I was hesitant to try this, but I was like, I don't know, it sounds kind of right up my alley and it really has been right up my alley. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my face and I'm going to look up the reviews. Oh, this is getting good reviews too. I feel like a lot of, um, since like Shape Tape Foundation Gate, I feel like a lot of Tarte's like base products just get like dragged through the mud like inherently because like they just, People hate them now. Okay, let me go to the one star ratings. Someone said I tried it on and feel like it didn't grab on my skin. My skin is so dry, so it just seemed cakey on my face like it made no difference. And the bottle is small and expensive for the price. I didn't like it all for people who have dry skin. 
Okay. I'm trying to like, <laughs> to, like sometimes when people say certain things about makeup, I'm like, oh, okay, I know exactly what went, what, like what went wrong there. Um, and then other times it's like, like this person saying it didn't grab on my skin. So to me, I would be like, okay, so if it didn't grab on your skin, they probably found it like too dewy or that like it wasn't like layering well. But then they said that their skin's dry and it seemed cakey, which to me is like, what? <laughs> and then said it made no difference. So it's like, do you feel like this is like sheer, but also like looks like this is giving you like only texture, like invisible coverage while texture. This is $38 Canadian for reference. The uh, size is one ounce, 30 milliliters. Let me see what this is. This is the Ilia one, one ounce, 30 milliliters. Estee Lauder double wear nude. Oh wow, they don't have a thing on there. That's unique. 1.08 fluid ounces, 32 milliliters. 35 milliliters, 1.18 ounces. I feel like it might look kind of small, but I feel like that's actually a pretty like standard size for a foundation, but interesting. This person said, not bad, but no SPF protection. I thought this was replacing the Tarte Tinted Moisturizer that does have SPF, but this product does not have SPF protection. I bought it and now I'm bummed, not serving the purpose for which I had intended, which like, it's just like, I guess that kind of sounds like a you problem. Cause like they didn't like market it as having SPF protection anyways someone said disappointed order based on reviews and i love the tart maracuja oil but this stuff is awful it had a strong odor which odor much stronger than the oil it doesn't last as well and it melts off the face i would return if i could i couldn't remember imagine how this would work in warm weather hmm someone said nope 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 I can't with this product. It's just not good. It oxidizes quickly and doesn't go on great. I tried a beauty blender, a, br a brush, and my fingers. I also tried different primers and nada. Save money and buy something else. Okay, let's put this product on our faces. So I got, I bought two different shades actually. I got shade 10N, fair, neut fair neutral, uh, fair neutral, and then 20N, light neutral. They both are like a little bit more, actually this one's like almost like gray. <laughs> which kind of works for me. And then this one's like a little bit more kind of like orangey yellow tone, which is nice when I'm not so like abundantly pale. This is again, like one of the first products from Tarte from like a base product range that I really, really love. I need a lighter concealer and I just don't have one. <laughs> but this is one of the first like base products that I really love from them. I feel like it, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that I find it hydrating because I don't really, um, but I do feel like it's a really, really nice like tinted moisturizer minus like it's not super moisturizing. It's just like a nice like skin tint, I would say, where it's not like super full coverage and really, really intense, but it's also like, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more than Glossier, whatever that thing is called, because I'm always gonna use that as like a reference for like lighter, coverage foundations. It gives you coverage. I feel like you can layer it fairly well. I do find that the more that you layer it, it kind of like takes, if you, if you have a nice thin layer, I really like the texture of it. Like I feel like it has a really nice finish and it looks kind of more like satiny skin finish. Like it's not um, super dewy or glowy or anything like that, which I think is nice because a lot of sheer formulas are dewier, which is great for me, <laughs> but most people don't really like they're not really on board yet, you know, with that, they just aren't feeling it. So I think it's kind of nice that it it has sort of like that, just has a nice texture. But I do find that the more that I layer it, it does tend to get like a little bit cakier for me, which I don't like as much, but I usually just kind of apply it in a thin layer. And if anything, if I feel like I need a little bit more coverage in an area, then like I'll usually go over top with a concealer, especially because right now specifically my concealer does not match <laughs> my skin it's too dark so i like to be able to take a little bit of my concealer on my cheeks to almost kind of like blend down that uh eye concealer i realize this has nothing to do with the foundation i'm just letting you know my process but anyways i really really like that foundation i feel like it has good coverage uh layers well and i think that it has a finish that like more a more broad kind of group of people will enjoy rather than just me liking to look like oil slick kind of situation. It's a coverage that is everything that I've wanted and more because 
I don't know. I just feel like it's so fucking hard to find like a tinted moisturizer that's really, really good. A lot of tinted moisturizers are either just simply like basically full coverage foundations like put in a bottle that says tinted moisturizer or they're so dewy and like so like glossy almost that they like are really patchy and you can't apply them in like a nice even layer. This is like perfectly down the middle. Like I would say this is like just like a great division between like a tint, a true like tinted moisturizer and like a foundation. Like it's like right smack dab in the middle. So I think that it would be like a good segue into lighter coverage foundation for people that are typically kind of leaning more towards medium full coverage. I think that if you were to wear this one, you wouldn't be like, oh wow, this has done literally nothing for my skin. <laughs> I just, just like me caping for these products so hard, being like, no, you will love it. We're all gonna love it. We just have to try. Um, so yeah, I think it would be like a good transition kind of product for those that are maybe wanting to like start wearing a little bit of lighter coverage as well. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I've really been liking that one a lot. And I feel like it wears quite well throughout the day. That's another thing. Um, a lot of people feel like tinted moisturizers like don't wear that well. This one I feel like lasts quite a while just being that it is like a little bit more of a uh, skin finish rather than being super majestically dewy, you know? Okay, what's next? Oh yeah, my milk baked bronzer. I wonder if people hate this a little bit. Wow, I'm surprised because it smells so much like Play-Doh. Okay, one star reviews. Horrible packaging, extremely warm. Their new packaging with clear twist cap, that's not new, is so hard to remove. Oh. The clear protective inner cap is so hard to remove and chips a piece of the bronzer each time I get it off. The mini tube is a lot smaller than before. It's so tiny and short that it's really awkward to hold. I don't understand why they would put more product into a smaller tube. Six grams is not an extremely small amount, but milk made it look smaller than a free sample. The twist up mechanism is also horrible and broke on my second use. It was difficult to twist back from the very beginning. I had to push <laughs> it back but now i can't twist it up or down or even push it in the color baked is also very warm leaning yellow orange that's what i like it blends a little patchy too needless to say i'm very disappointed returning as soon as the store reopens someone said hollow question mark question mark uh, <laughs> i don't know if i got a bad one but it was hollow on the inside the first time i tried to use it on my face it basically crumbled since i had already thrown up my old bronzer i had to draw it on using the crumbled pieces in my fingers which <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing this like product like breaking into like particles and then like picking up a piece of me like <laughs> like a piece of like shattered glass. <laughs> I had to use the crumbled pieces in my fingers, which honestly just made a big mess and I looked ridiculous trying to I looked ridiculous, Sephora, trying to put it on. I threw it out after because it was impossible to apply it correctly. I didn't want to have to store the broken pieces in a Ziploc bag. Oh, gross. I do feel like that person probably got a bad one. <laughs> it probably was like poured oddly. Uh, also, this like bronzer is like so disturbing. It doesn't have a lid anymore. This bronzer is like so disturbingly old. And it, as far as I know, it's always had that twist off lid. I don't remember having anything other than this, that packaging. Someone said this was really orange. The product itself arrived damaged. The outside packaging was fine, but the actual bronzer inside was scuffed up slash dug into. Lol. Very orange and came damaged. Weird. I can't believe how many people are saying that it came damaged. The cream did not melt onto my skin. and wasn't as blendable as I thought it would be. It was a sticky layer that just sat on the surface of my skin for my hair to get caught in with each head turn. If you have sensitive skin, don't buy this. So far, all of the stick of all of the sticks, so far all of the sticks from milk I've gotten in my order make my skin itch. And they all smelled like clay. Honestly, man, it is like uncanny how much it smells like Play-Doh. Oh, a lot of people saying they like twisting mechanism. The quality of this product is low, it breaks easily. I will say like milk's packaging is like, yeah, it's, in, it's cheap packaging. <laughs> I'm not like shocked and appalled that like the Packaging isn't working because like it is like it is cheap packaging. Okay, I'm gonna take that on my uh, elf 105 brush This is such like an exorbitant amount of product. I can't even describe to you again. Like I've had this for Several years and I still have like quite a bit of product left Like it's so it's like almost comical How much product is in here? Can you imagine my thing broke just from me doing this? This is insane. This is insane. Do you understand how much I use this? Like I use this a lot. <laughs> like there's like full months where like I use this every single day and I've probably had this product 
I know that I had it in my old apartment, which like most of you are gonna be like, you lived in an apartment? Yeah, dude, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's how long I've had this freaking product for a very long time. So, okay, this product is 28 goddamn grams compared to like, I have my Westman Atelier stick here, which is six grams. Six, this is 22 more grams. That's like insane amounts of product. And yeah, my twist up, my twist down isn't working now. So I just have to push the product in all mushy with my finger. I agree with the Sephora reviews. <laughs> Uh, just the person that said I looked ridiculous. I just love it. Long story short, I've had this product forever. I should be throwing it out, but I'm not going to. And I love it so much. It is like an orangier tone for sure. Like it definitely is like a, br it's a bronzer, not a contour. I don't know. I guess that it's, it's just gonna depend on like your skin tone in terms of like how this is going to translate because I don't ever really feel like this is overly orange where I'm like, ooh, God, like that was not the right decision for me today. It's kind of like my go-to because I feel like it is warm and it obviously is like a bronzer, but it's not, it's sheer enough that it blends out really, really beautifully. It doesn't end up looking super patchy. You can layer it really, really well if you want um, a little bit of like a darker tone or if you want to kind of, um, maybe like layer like underneath your cheekbones or whatever. It's just so, Perfect. I love it so much. It really is like a, it's, it's, I don't know why I'm like uncomfortable right now. I feel like it's like my holy grail, like cream bronzer as of right now. Like there's a lot of cream bronzers that I really, really love, but um, I just keep going back to this one and I, I'm never disappointed. Like there's just some products where it's like I put it on and I'm like, eh, that was like a little bit too much like that wasn't what I was like really going for and I don't feel like that's ever the case with this one I just love it so much. So There you go. That's my rebuttal. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little orange But in the best way and the packaging is ch cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap and ugly. Okay Is that it? I guess so. Oh, right. No, I have this little thing that I'm gonna use as a highlight But let me quickly put this like blush on. Okay, I'm not gonna look up this blush because I don't know if it's my favorite yet and I'm not even gonna tell you what it is, but you can guess. Okay, this is the product that I feel like could potentially be controversial, I just don't know. The uh, Becca Light Shifter Brightening Concealer. Wow, I'm so shocked. I feel like normally I like look up my favorite products and everyone's like, this sucks. This also, well, 3.8, which is almost a four. <laughs> so, someone's tagline just says sad, period. I wanted so badly to like this product. However, it didn't show up on my skin, dot, dot, dot. Someone said not for people with any sort of da, which I'm imagining they were gonna say dark under eyes. Uh, for me personally, this is a terrible concealer. If you're the type of person who has darker under eyes, this concealer is not for you, agreed. I don't have really dark circles, but I do have slightly darker under eye area. I typically use medium to full coverage concealer depending on the occasion. This concealer did not brighten and it barely covered my dark under eyes. I received this item as a sample and thank goodness for that because I would have been so upset if I spent money on this. Someone said big no. Got a sample card of this from the Sephora. Wow, people are like getting all the fucking samples. I feel like whenever I order things, they're like, do you want a sample of this like, our fucking rotten lunch from last week? And I'm like, I, yes, I'll take it. I never get dope samples. Anyway, got a sample card of this with a Sephora order. I found it to be hard to spread and it emphasized in texture. What? Interesting. Okay, sticking with NARS. NARS like cannot fucking be beat with that concealer, man. Everyone loves it. So disappointed. This is not a concealer, rather highlighter. Yeah. Why would one highlight their blemishes? It's not really brightening, rather making your skin look extremely oily slash silver. Hmm. I'm surprised that that person feels that way because they're the lightest shade. Interesting. Okay. Also, it's clogging pores and skin look very unhealthy after using this product. Very disappointed. I'm severely disappointed with this concealer. I was so excited to try it. I'm a huge fan of Becca products. This concealer brightened my eye a little, but settled into any and all lines, making an unholy mess. <laughs> I'm returning this as soon as I can. I've attached a picture so you can see how it clumped. Where's the picture? God damn it. Oh my God, I thought this was a picture of me really quickly. Hmm, okay. This concealer, the, the second that I tried it on my channel, I was like, oh, people are gonna feel some type of way about this. Never in a million years would I put this on like spots, ever, no. It, it is definitely like a highlighting concealer. Like it's brightening in that it has like, well, I'm pretty sure it just has mica in it. It's brightening in the same way that a highlighter is brightening. That is like a true fact. Like it, 
it's not going to be a product for everybody. I think that this is something that is First of all, it's really, really glowy. That in general, I think is gonna be harder for people because it's just kind of, it, it's 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 a little bit odd. Like it's a little bit odd to have like really glowy kind of like under eyes. The way that I've been using this honestly is like as a highlighter. I typically take it and I apply it sort of like starting like right underneath my under eyes and going up. So I apply it like a little bit higher maybe than I would like a traditional highlighter. And I will blend it up to like be right underneath my eyes. But the thing that I like about this is that it's like a really pretty kind of like subtle glow. And I actually feel like it doesn't emphasize my texture at all. And that's why I really like it because a lot of, uh, I just, I have textured skin. <laughs> so a lot of highlights really do, even sometimes with creams and stuff, highlight my texture and I don't like it. So, <laughs> That's what I really really like about this is I feel like it kind of just brings everything together for me Like I feel like it kind of helps make my you know Like sometimes when you're concealer, it's like it's very obvious the difference between like your concealer and your face Like even if it's like blended nicely and whatever else I feel like this almost like makes it like look like a little bit more seamless for me Like anytime I put this on I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, that was like the finishing touch that I needed It's just really really pretty. It's a really nice like thin formula on the skin. It doesn't look cakey It never looks like glittery or anything like that. It is really glowy so I will use it underneath my eyes every now and again but it definitely is like a different look it's a different thing and I can see a lot of people not loving it that way however if you bought the product to use it as a concealer and you're not loving it as a concealer I would recommend trying it as like a little bit more of a highlight situation because I do think it's very very pretty uh, and then I'll apply that basically all over my goddamn face <laughs> and that's the situation but you guys those are some of my favorite products in the Sephora reviews and how dare they, but some of them were valid. But most of them not and I'm so upset. Should I like put on my eyelashes to like do a whole outro? Oh, fine. Be right back. Wow, I haven't worn like full on makeup in a little bit and I'm actually like... Pretty cute. <laughs> pretty fucking cute. Anyways, thanks so much guys. I had a good time. Hopefully you had a good time. Hopefully your week ahead is gonna be great. Great, and um, I'll see you another time. <laughs> time, 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 time. Yeah, I'll see you later. Okay, peace out. Bye.